COVID, COVID damages the lungs, the mental body, leading to a disruption of one's reasoning and analysis ability, and ultimately affects the causal body. I keep thinking that it is not for nothing that the virus disconnects all the senses, like the sense of smell, limiting the breathing, thereby disrupting one of the rhythms of the vital rhythm. My question is, how can this illness be cured or minimized with the help of the elements course and main course? You've made a very correct observation about this affliction, colleague. You've been able to see its essence quite clearly. Even its effects from a point of view of magic, you've seen them just right. This virus is not purely a virus meaning that it has a very specific effect in relation to consciousness and of course affects precisely these two parameters as you pointed out. The first effect is one on the mental body, making one unable to control the element of air. The element of air works directly via the mental body. And on the other hand, breathing is one of the components of the tree yune vital rhythm. The other two are the heartbeat and the breathing of the spinal cord. Respectively, the vital rhythm becomes disrupted if one of its components gets eliminated. Until the other two components are able to compensate by taking over the functional workload of the missing component, thereby balancing out the rhythm, the body and the mind will no doubt be in distress. Bringing the vital rhythm into a balance isn't difficult. You just have to restore the breathing, the respiratory function. Walk more, breathe more, go on runs if possible, especially after an illness. And soon enough, the vital rhythm will restore itself on its own. The extensive lung damage which is dealt by the virus tanks the vital rhythm down to zero. This is when some people become hospitalized and their shortness of breath, the missing breathing function, is compensated by other devices. In terms of the air element, the virus makes it impossible to consume oxygen. From the viewpoint of the occult projection, oxygen is truthful information a truthful informational component. This virus does not allow one to see the actual truth and therefore forces one to replace it with the truth offered by the system, replacing it with a different kind of oxygen, in other words. But this is just the occult reflection of what is taking place. As you already pointed out, the virus does not affect everyone. There are consciousnesses and bodies that are not affected by it as an illness and possibly deal with it quite easily. These are probably some particular consciousnesses. They possess a certain something that allows them to not only physically but also psychologically get easily through the illness. And the answer to this question naturally lies in the mental body itself. When the virus gets to the consciousness, it firstly affects the mental body. And if the mental body is very stiff, very stereotyped and containing many rigid mental constructs, and what is that? It is that mental rack that allows the thoughts moving only in one certain direction according to defined vectors. It does not imply the appearance of any informational currents that would be capable of laying out any other path except the ones already laid out by the stereotyped way of thinking. But all of a sudden, the virus gets into these pattern structures, and like rust, it starts to weaken them from within, causing collapse. And as the mind does not possess the habit of laying out new vectors for the movement of thoughts, the mental body experiences a collapse from within. It either starts to strongly resist completely shutting out any kind of new information, or the existing mental worldview comes crashing down. But this type of consciousness 
cannot live with an unclear worldview. It is simply unable to do so. And at the moment, an impulse comes, a reaction to the vital rhythm that says, you are dying. People with a rigid mentality suffer from this sickness more than creative or young people, or people who are interested in things and actively involved in something. It is also possible to track the effect by the features of the human channel and the peculiarities of the psyche. For those familiar with this theory, the theory of Phoebe's and Dionysus's, who is at greater risk to be affected by this virus? Phoebe's or Dionysus's? There are, of course, certain regularities. How to deal with it using our methods? By working on our consciousness. Stimulating the vital rhythm, the more often the better. Stimulating elements that are great at getting rid of all virus-like defects present in the consciousness. And knowing that it affects the mental body specifically. Finding the vulnerabilities present precisely within the mental body. Without any further holding back, start working with the rigid mental constructs. Learn how to detect them within your consciousness and skillfully take them apart, thereby freeing the mind from all the chamber walls that the mental body is captured within due to a rigidly formed worldview, perhaps due to the religious environment or perhaps due to a parental environment or due to the societal environment. In any case, make sure not to leave it to its own devices, do not let it run its own course. If you are aware of possessing the quality of a rigid mentality, know that you are particularly vulnerable. People who are university educated, People whose mind has received undisputable scientific truths are in this case even more vulnerable, because in their mind there is rarely space for an alternative. And when no alternatives are present, one can surely obtain more social effects and much faster but the drawback of this social success is, among others, this particular vulnerability. In a situation when one should engage their creativity and look for an alternative solution to a non-standard situation, the consciousness goes on strike. And the physical body also goes on strike. The physical body surely reacts a bit later, but this virus does unveil. It unveils. Therefore, it surely is quite unpleasant to live knowing that this plague floats all around you. But at the same time, if you take it as if it were a sort of litmus test, for example, as something that reveals the vulnerabilities of your consciousness, then it's even possible to be thankful if it suddenly decides to test you. I think that in these last two years, many of you have in one way or another dealt with this calamity. Well, judging by your reaction, by your reaction to it, you can actually determine and observe how your consciousness reacted and possibly run a diagnosis of your own self from the point of view I just described.